Uh, so like I said, this kind of goes hand in hand with uh, what we did. What I went over yesterday, I just put a presentation because there really wasn't any math involved. So I figured I could just record it, shoot it out to you guys, kind of a more use your brain on how gases interact. So we'll recap that real quick. What we're gonna look at today, there's kind of two flavors of this. Um, today's flavor is looking at, I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody. I mean, I guess I don't even care if you're unmuted or not. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so this gas law stuff has two flavors. Uh, today's flavor is going to be nothing involving moles, okay? It's gonna be pressure, volume, and temperature and how those things relate to each other mathematically. So uh, the next, next week, this will be a next week problem for us, we'll do the gas laws when you do throw moles in and it kind of uh, changes things a little bit. So today's gas laws are kind of the mathematical version of these things, the things that change or influence pressure. So moles of gas, volume, and temperature are the three things that if you have a confined gas and you mess with these things, they will mess with pressure. Now, today what we're gonna do is Utilizing the gas laws, and by the way, there is a gas law that involves moles, but I just kind of like to set it up this way, where we're going to look at the interactions between pressure, volume, and temperature, and what happens if you have a gas and you mess with one of these things, how do the other things respond? That is our goal. So this is kind of like algebra one or pre-algebra with a chemistry flavor, okay? So that's going to be our goal today is to go through those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, I'm going to teach you guys what the, the rule is or the gas law. These gas laws are named after the scientists that figured them out. And then we're going to look at how they respond when you take the gas and you change something. So kind of the relationship between two of these things. So we'll start with the first one. Okay. And our goal today is to go over four gas laws. Three of them um, are simple more simple. One of them is a little bit more complex. The first gas law is called Boyle's law. Boyle's law is, this is the long-winded version, okay? So if you don't want to write all this stuff down, I get it, man. I'm going to post this stuff online, but basically I'll translate what this means for you. If temperatures and moles of a gas are kept constant, so that means we're not messing with temperature, we're not messing with moles, okay? Get those out. The volume of a gas varies inversely with pressure. Huh? The volume of a gas varies inversely with pressure. So with a lot of these gas laws, we only look at a couple of things. So like, if we're not messing with temperature, we're not messing with moles, we're gonna get rid of them. What we're looking at is, what happens to the pressure when you mess with the volume? What happens to the pressure when you mess with the volume? So the translated version of this is if one is increased, the other is decreased. If volume is increased, the pressure is decreased and vice versa. If volume is decreased, the pressure is increased. So that's that whole inversely proportional thing. Boyle's law is the only inverse relationship. This is the example we looked at with the syringe. If I take the syringe, I'm trying to get in the picture here. If I compress it, the pressure inside goes up. So Mathematically, how do we represent that? These things are represented with kind of a before or it, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Now, like, once again, this is why this is tough to do when we're online and not in the classroom. What the heck does that mean? P1 and V1, P1 times V1, this is kind of like the initial, this is the initial gas. P2V2 is kind of the final gas. So we'll do some examples of these so you can see how these work. But basically, to summarize, here's the idea. You're going to get, be given in a roundabout way three out of these four variables, and you're going to algebraically solve for the fourth. That's it. Now, figuring out what goes with what is going to be what you guys are going to – is a thing that takes a little bit of reps and some practice and stuff, okay? But that's the idea. 
what happens initially, what happens final. So I'll show you guys an example problem and I'll kind of go through it. And I'm gonna show you guys some hints on how these things will be a little bit easier for you, okay? So you have a gas, it's in a one liter container. It has a pressure of 2.3 atmospheres. So we have a volume and a pressure. Because we haven't messed with anything yet, I'm gonna say that that's V1, and I'm gonna say that that guy is P1. The question is, find the new pressure if the volume is decreased to 0.5 liters. So this is a volume. It says it's a volume, but if I didn't know that, I would look at the uh, label. So we're gonna call that guy V2. So think of it this way. We have this gas, it's just chilling. One liter, 2.3 ATM. I'm gonna take that, that gas and I'm gonna squeeze the volume to half of its volume. The question is, what is the new pressure when this happens? So this is how you use Boyle's Law. As you go through the problem, you try to identify what we have, and then you just go ahead and you use Boyle's Law. So I'll just go ahead and rewrite Boyle's Law, and then I'll show you guys what we would plug in. So literally, it's algebra. We take 2.3, we take one liter, we don't know what P2 is. We know that that guy is going to be squeezed to 0.5 liters. We do some algebra. We find that P2 is equal to 4.6, and its labels will be whatever that pressure's labels are, ATM. Okay? All right, I'm going to push pause. If you guys have questions, holler at me on that. I mean, like I said, we're doing – this is the thing that sucks, right? We're doing – math <laughs> online thank goodness we're recording this if you have issues you can go back and look at that or you can email me or you can join office hours whenever okay so that is Boyle's law Boyle's law is the only one that's inversely related so as one goes up one goes down okay if you have questions on mute and holler four three two one okay Gas law number one, done. And I'm getting a phone call, and I'm just going to have to do that. Okay? Gas law number two is called Charles's law. Charles's law basically states if pressure in moles are kept constant, temperature in kelvins. Oh, boy, is that important. I'll show you guys how to deal with that. And volume are directly related. Temperature and volume are directly related. So pressure and volume or moles are kept constant. I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of those. Charles's law is basically the temperature and volume one. Okay, they're directly related. So in other words, if you heat up the temperature of a confined gas, the volume, if it's available, able to expand, it will expand. So think of like a balloon. Heating it up or filling it up in a hot room, taking it outside where it's really, really cold, the balloon's going to get smaller. So the translated version of Charles's law is this. When one goes up, the other goes up. Okay. Now, this is the key for us in using in this entire chapter, anytime you have a gas and you are calculating anything with temperature, you've got to use Kelvins. You have to use Kelvins. If you don't use Kelvins, you're going to get weird answers. When you get weird answers, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, hey, yo, did you use Kelvins? And you go, no, I used Celsius. I thought that was cool. And I'm going to go, no, you got to use Kelvins. So the question is, how do you convert to Kelvins? If you're given Kelvins, awesome. I'm a very nice person. I just gave you Kelvins. You can plug it into the equation. But if I did not give you Kelvins, here's how you convert to Kelvins. I'm just going to write it down here. Kelvin's is equal to 273 plus whatever the temperature in Celsius is. 273 plus the temperature in Celsius. So the temperature is zero degrees, then it's 273 Kelvin. You have to use Kelvin's when you use these equations. Okay? So what is Charles's law? What is the, the equation form of this? Well, it's going to be volume and temperature so it's going to look like this 
It's going to look like this. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Okay? V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So get that equation down. You'll notice that this one looks a little bit different. It's got volume in it. It's got temperature in it. And it's also written a little bit differently than Boyle's law. So that is that. That's Charles's law. We'll do an example of Charles's law next. Okay. All right. We have a gas. It has a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius. Well, that sucks. I gave you Celsius. It has a volume of one liter. Find the volume if the temperature is increased to 35 degrees Celsius. So I got to tell you, the first thing I would do anytime I'm doing a gas law and I see that the temperatures are not given to me in Kelvin is I would figure out what those Kelvin temperatures are. Okay. So that's our volume. We'll just call that V1. And we're going to put that over T1 here, which is going to be, what is that? 297. V1 over T1, 297 Kelvin. So this is liters. This is Kelvin. We're going to find the new volume. If the temperature is increased to 35 degrees Celsius. So once again, I am the worst because I gave you Celsius. So we'd have to add that business up. I believe that equals 308. We do some awesome cross multiplying and we solve for V2. Okay. So. My new volume, the volume went up to 1.04 liters. Okay. What you use for sig figs is whatever you plugged in to your equation. Notice that we had two sig figs here, but when we convert to Kelvin, we have three. We always use the smallest number of sig figs but you use whatever you plug into the gas law, All right? Unmute and ask questions if you have any. If you're brave. No? Okay. Third gas law. It's called the Gay-Lussac law. The Gay-Lussac law. Wait, what was the answer to that last one? 1.04 oh, liters. Okay. Good? Okay, the Gay-Lussac law says if moles and volume are kept constant, so we're not messing with moles and volume, let's shank them, the pressure and temperature are directly related. So this is a reaction, or this is a gas law that looks at pressure and temperature. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that when one goes up, the other goes up. So if the temperature of a gas that's confined goes up, then the pressure goes up. This is why it's a little sketch to take something that is fairly rigid and can't change its volume, throw that into a fire, and let that gas inside heat up. It heats up, the pressure builds, and then it goes boom, and hopefully nobody gets hurt. So here is the Gay-Lussac law written out in equation form. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Dang it, temperature, make sure that it's in Kelvins anytime we do a problem with temperature. In this case, the Gay-Lussac law, you have to convert everything to Kelvins, okay? Let's look at an example. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna try to just give you guys the guts of this. If this is going too fast, I apologize. I just don't want the videos to be like super long. You guys have the ability to uh, look at those in classroom after I upload them. All right. All right. I was nice to you on this one. A gas at 204 Kelvin has a pressure of 1.2 ATM. Find the new pressure if the temperature is increased to 208 or 288 Kelvin. So we have a gas at this temperature, 204 Kelvin. That's pressure one. 1.2 ATM. What is the new pressure if we crank up the temperature to 288? So, once again, glorified algebra or pre-algebra, we're solving for a variable here. 
doing cross multiplication. So when all is said and done, now sig figs wise, we have to look at this real quick. This guy has two. These guys have three. We always go with the smallest number. So 1.7 would be our answer here in ATM because we want to end up in a pressure. Are there any questions about that? 1.7 ATM. So those are the three gas laws that we use that are named after scientists that figured them out. This is the mathematical version of what you were signed yesterday. Yesterday, we were just trying to describe what happens to the gas. Today, we're mathematically trying to figure out, okay, the pressure I know is going to go up when I heat it up. How much does it go up? It goes from 1.2 to 1.7. That's the idea. Okay. So I'm actually, um, do I want to tell you the combined gas law? Do I want to do that right now? No, I'm going to skip this, actually. It's just got a lot going on. All right, I think the first three are enough for right now. Now, here's some hints that I'm going to give you, and then we'll, uh, I'll stop the recording. You guys can ask questions if you have them. The hints on picking the correct equation is everything. Because I don't know sometimes, what, what, am I supposed to use Boyle's Law or Charles' Law? Which one am I supposed to use? So the way that you can figure out which one you're going to use if they don't flat out tell you, hey, use Boyle's Law, hey, use the gay lusic Law, is you're going to use labels in the problem to help you figure out which equation to use. So what does that mean? Well, if numbers are given to you and these values, these, these labels that are given to you have any of these labels, it's going to be a pressure. For right now, we're going to use a pressure measurement called ATM and a pressure measurement called KPA. ATM and KPA, atmospheres, kilopascals. If you see those in an equation, you know that it's one of the two that has pressure in it. Now, here's the deal. People will ask, do we have to convert one to the other or vice versa? It does not matter. If they give you a pressure in atmosphere and they want you to solve for a pressure, uh, pressure is going to be in atmospheres. The only time we'd have to do a conversion, and trust me, I'm not going to do this to you right now, is if I gave you P1 as an atmosphere and P2 as KPA. We ain't got time for that right now. We're just trying to learn the basics. So I'm not going to do that to you guys. Okay. So look for ATM and KPA. You'll know it's a pressure. If it's a pressure, you're either using Boyle's Law or the gay lusic law, okay? Volume. So there's lots of different measurements of volume that we can use for this. And that nice thing about these gas laws versus the ones we're going to learn down the road is that volume isn't very specific. In other words, you see liters or milliliters or anything cubed. I'm going to write cubic centimeters there. Anything cubed, so that could be cubic meters, cubic decimeters, cubic inches, whatever, it doesn't matter, okay? If you see a volume that's measured like that, you'll know it's a volume, you'll know you'll have to either use Boyle's Law or Charles's Law, okay? So look out for those. Once again, does it matter which one we use? No, as long as they're both in the same measurement, if V1 and V2 are in the same measurement, which they will be for right now, no, just identify that it's a volume, okay? And then the last unit, it's pretty easy for us. Temperature will either be given to you in Kelvin, that is a gift from me to you, or it'll be given to you in Celsius because, you know, I'm feeling a little, uh, uh, a little angry, I guess. I don't know. And I'm making you convert things to Kelvin, All right? So those will be your hints on picking the correct equation. So if I had a problem that had ATM liters and then had another liter, I know I would have pressure one, pressure two, or dummy, volume one, volume two. I need the equation that has pressure and volume in it. I know I would have to use Boyle's law. And I do some algebra. Okay? That's how we do those problems. 
What questions do you have if you have any? Okay, we're not even going to do any practice right now um, unless anybody specifically wants to see some practice. Okay. I'm going to push stop on the recording. And then we, if you guys need, uh, if you want to see some examples or whatever, you guys just holler at me.